Well, hello again. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper. I'm one of the associate pastors here at St. Luke's. And this is In It Together, our daily devotional series from the pastors as we kind of navigate through um, this time together. It is Holy Week. Uh, it is also Good Friday. And so I thought it made sense to kind of share some thoughts about this day and what it means for us as Christians, but also uh, just some things that I've been thinking about lately. Luke 22, 44 through 49 says, It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain off the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit your spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. So here's what I want to talk about. Why do we call it Good Friday? That seems kind of silly to me. I mean, we're talking about probably one of the darkest moments in human history. Uh, the moment when God became flesh and suffered and had his body broken and died on a cross. There's a scripture in Matthew, Matthew 27, 46, where it, it paints a particularly dark picture when Jesus seems to lose his nerve and he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's a hard moment. And I, I think in a lot of ways, we try to explain away what's going on there. Why, why did Jesus lose his faith? Or was, uh, did he no longer feel the presence of the Father? Or maybe he was just doing it for show. And um, I think when things are hard, it's important that we let it lie. And if scripture has it in there, I think we uh, shouldn't try to theologize it too much. Um, but it captures kind of this moment of darkness. In, in the passage I just read, it said, and then the darkness came over the land and it wasn't even nighttime yet. This is a dark moment. It's been said that you can't get to Easter without going through Good Friday. And I think that's true. I think we call Good Friday good because we understand that in this seminal moment in human history, that ultimate victory over sin and death took place. So we can call it Good Friday, but in the moment, I'm not sure how good things actually were. Was it good that a Jew who grew up a carpenter was being crucified in this horrific manner uh, because of a political power struggle between the Pharisees and the Romans? Was it good that a mother watched her son die before her eyes? No. I can hear you probably thinking to yourself, well, Pastor, no, those things weren't good, but those things were necessary. And in fact, it became a good thing because it led us to Easter. And I, I think that's true. Obviously, that's true. But I think it's okay to admit that in the moment, Good Friday wasn't good. I think it's important for us to be able to say, in the moment, what was going on was not a good thing. And even though that might sound almost sacrilegious, I think it's important because it allows us to say that in the moment, other things aren't good as well. Because we have this kind of theological conundrum when tragedy happens in our life. If God is the sovereign God of the world, if God is in control, then what do we do when bad stuff happens? We can try to rationalize it away. We can try to say, well, God has a plan. Or, um, you know, I've heard things like when a, a, a baby dies, uh, we try to comfort ourselves or other people by saying, well, God, heaven needed another angel. 
or say you're in the midst of a divorce that you have done everything you can to try to keep things together and yet you're just watching your life and your family fall apart. Is that part of God's plan? Is that a good thing? I don't think so. And I think we need to be allowed to say in the moment, this is not good. This is not okay. This is not how things were supposed to be. God never took your child away from you. The heart of God was never that your family would be torn apart so that something better could happen down the line. You know, we're going through this coronavirus thing, and it very well may be true that some really good things come out of this. But I think right now, we're allowed to say this isn't good. I mean, people losing their jobs, economic upheaval, people dying, that's not a part of God's plan. That wasn't a part of what God intended for us. And I think we have proof of that. I think um, God in these moments are not saying, hey, this is good. God may have a plan. God can work through things that aren't good. But we're allowed to say, nah, this, this ain't good. This was not supposed to happen. Jesus, when he went to his friend's tomb, Lazarus, in the shortest scripture of the Bible, two words, Jesus wept. And this was right before Jesus was going to bring Lazarus back to life. And so even though Jesus knew that everything was going to be okay, even though Jesus knew that God works all things for good and, wow, just wait and see what's about to happen. No, he took the time to grieve. He took the time to say, my friend is dead and this is not good. There's a moment in scripture where God declares something to be good. Genesis 1.31 says, God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And it was so good and so complete that God rested on the seventh day. See, God did have a plan, and it was a good one. But then, for the sake of freedom, for the sake of genuine relationships, sin entered the world, and that altered the plan. And God, we know, is a masterful uh, adapter of the plan, uh, changing things uh, to kind of course correct human history and making them become good again. And I think that's what Good Friday is. Good Friday is that moment in history where we see God adapting the plan in order for us to be restored again. I submit to you, friends, that God still has a plan. That that plan, as Christians, we can have faith that that will come to pass. But the plan, I think, is returning this world and all of us back to that original good that he declared at the beginning of creation. And how we get there may not always be how God would have wanted us to go. But his continued goodness will one day overcome all the things that we right now should rightly declare as not good. In C.S. Lewis's book, The Great Divorce, um, one of my favorite books, and has impacted me theologically. I, if you ever hear me preach, I probably reference his book at least twice. He has a moment in there when he says, God's goodness works backwards through time to remove the pain and the brokenness and the hurt of all of the bad in this world. That doesn't change the fact that losing your loved one was not a good thing. It just means that the sting will no longer be there one day. One day we will be in eternity with God and with our loved ones, and we will look back on that moment, and we will not say, hey, that was, it turns out that was great. But we will say, that doesn't bother me anymore. We are reconciled together again. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57 says, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, friends, as we commemorate Good Friday today, and Jesus hanging on the cross. I think it is appropriate that we keep that name. Good Friday.
but it doesn't mean when we call it Good Friday that we are proclaiming that what actually happened some 2,000, 20 years ago in and of itself was good. No, what we are claiming as it was the catalyst of God's goodness working back through time in history to bring back all things reconciled to him. To declare that one day, it ain't good today, but one day it will be good again. And so, friends, if Jesus is going to spend time grieving in the moment, if Jesus is going to spend time sweating blood in the garden, I think it's okay for us to spend time as well. Not forcing ourselves to explain away why bad things are happening, but grieving in the moment with God when it does. You can't get to Easter Sunday without going through Good Friday. And so that's what we do today. Take care, friends. Love each other well, and we'll see you again soon.